What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create this open 3D view in Revit, well both of these versions. Uh, now Revit does have a section box tool which is amazing and it allows you to create some uh, 3D sections and 3D floor plans but it doesn't allow you to create these open 3D views, it's just not possible. Uh, and now uh, this is really annoying because these views are quite popular if you scroll through Pinterest and uh, take a look at some architecture uh, diagrams and models and so on. They usually use these open 3D view representations and I think it looks really cool. So I thought why not create a video where I show you a couple of different approaches or a couple of different methods where you can achieve something like this either by using a section box or by using design options. So these are a couple of tools that uh, that can allow you to create something like this uh, in Revit uh, without having to resort to any other software for creating this uh, cool effect. So that's the whole idea uh, about this uh, tutorial. Uh, now before I get into that, make sure to like this video. It does really help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm and it also promotes the video to other people that might like to see it. And uh, also make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week, multiple tutorials, so make sure not to miss any of those. And finally, uh, make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link just below the video. There I upload uh, numerous uh, Revit courses where I take the extra time. Uh, each course is uh, a few hours long and then I can kind of explore uh, Revit's complex topics in depth and show you every little setting and detail and so on. So I think it's really important. Uh, so if you're interested, make sure to check it out. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So this is the project that I'm going to be using. This is just a, well, a simple uh, house. Uh, this is the first uh, project in the beginner to intermediate level course. If you're interested in that, a link will be in the description. So the first link in the description takes you to my website. There you can see all of my courses. Anyways, uh, the first approach that I'm going to be using is the one using uh, section boxes. So uh, I said section boxes. Now, uh, if you're working in Revit, if you have any experience in Revit, you probably know that here in the properties, so the view properties, when nothing is selected in the view, in the properties panel, you get view properties. And here we have the option for a section box. It's here in the extents. Now, if I turn on that section box, a section box will appear. And this section box is, well, just one section box. You don't get two or three or five. So you only get one. So how do we create this view where we're going to be using multiple section boxes? Well, it's actually going to be a combination of multiple views at once. So let me show you how that's going to work. So I'm just going to create a section box like this. So this is just going to be the, let's call it the starting view. Uh, so once we have our starting view, we can make some adjustments. For example, I'm just going to select all of the uh, levels here in the 3D view and hide them. Or uh, you can just go here to hide element. Or alternatively, you can go in the visibility graphics overrides, go into annotation categories and then find levels and just uncheck those. Anyways, uh, once we have created this, uh, now it's time to make some modifications. So the first modification that I like to make uh, is the uh, locking of the view. So I just go here to unlock 3D view and I make sure to save the orientation and lock the view. So for the name, I am just going to call this one our open 3D view. There we go. Okay, so once we have named this, uh, now it's time to make our first modification. So the first one is going to create, turn this into an open floor plan. So I'm just going to drag this down up to a certain point, something like this. And then let's say that this is our starting position. So once I have this created, I'm then going to go into the project browser, find that open 3D view, right click, go into duplicate view. There we go. And then for this one, I'm just going to rename it. So right click, rename. And then this one is going to be called, I don't know, like view two. And this one, we're just going to rename into open view one. Okay, so for the second one, you want to select the section box and then you want to make it kind of disappear. So what does that mean? I'm just going to select the bottom grip and pull it all the way up until it stops. So now we're 
currently selecting just a little sliver of a model and it looks like a kind of a 3d floor plan that's okay that's perfect so we want to select that section box again we come on top here and then when we extend we just get from that point and then upward and that's exactly what i want to have for this the next step is just going to be pulling this towards the inside a little bit perhaps up to a certain point like this and then I'm just going to move this towards the center so move it in so the next segment is going to look kind of like that there we go so this is the next segment so this is our open 3d view too the next step is just going to be right clicking this going to duplicate view duplicate and then right click rename and this one is 3d view open 3d view 3 now for this one, for the third one, again, I'm going to use the same trick. So select this and then just go and create that little sliver. Next, let's select this again. Now, if it doesn't want to stretch out, you just want to hover over that, hit the tab key once. So it selects the other control arrow and then it's going to make a selection like that. There we go. And then extend it towards this side as well. And there we go. Perfect. The next step is just going to go to, well, go through all of these views one by one and turn off the section box or hide actually the section box. You don't want to turn it off. You want to hide it. So you want to select it, hide element. There we go. Second one, select, hide element. There we go. And the third one, select, hide element. Perfect. Okay, so once we have created all of these odd little views, now it's time to put them all together. So you want to go down to the project browser, find your sheets, right click, new sheet, A1 metric, that's perfect. And now I'm just going to start dragging these over. So let's start off with the first one. So drag it over, place it there. Then you want to go to the second one, or actually let's start with the third one. And then as you can see, you can get these little kind of, see these little blue lines? As you can see, that's going to help you kind of find the correct position and then finally we want the second one and again see how we get those little uh, snap lines to help us kind of position that correctly and there we go so now everything has came together and now we have this open 3d view now the next thing that they suggest is just select the whole thing uh, go to the properties and go to no title and that's just going to get rid of the title so now it's going to look like this so it looks much much better uh, now it does have some downsides uh, now the first downside is this ugly line that runs all the way across wherever you have that cut now i understand that you might not be very happy with that and one way of getting rid of that would be to go to each view like this and then you would have to find that line and just make it disappear. So let me show you how that would work. So let me just go back here to the view. Okay, so we have it here, for example. So that would mean that I would come to this view here, uh, go to the, or let's start off with this one. Okay, uh, next you want to go to the modify tab. Here we have on the view panel, we have the line work tool and you want to just choose the invisible lines and then you want to select this line. There we go and make it invisible. So now when we go back here, as you can see, it's much less obvious. Same thing goes with this line here. There we go. This line there. So you just make these invisible lines now, in some places, they're going to work okay. In some places, they're just going to look odd. So that's like the, the downside of this approach. So you can just go and search for all of these little lines, or you can just find kind of the main ones that you're annoyed with. So it is a way of getting rid of these lines, but it does have its downsides, obviously. So we can just go like that. Also here on the doors. Also here on the frame. So there you go, you can hide those. And then as you can see, it looks much nicer. Uh, and then you can do the same thing for this view. So line work tool, invisible lines, and then see how that kind of hides it. And then when you go back to the view, it's kind of hidden a little bit. So it is a downside, but it can be kind of fixed.
Uh, anyways, the second problem is if you decide to turn on shadows for any of these. So let me just go through all of these and turn on the shadows. Just like that. And now if I go to this 3D view, as you can see, those shadows look like a complete mess. So that's the downside. You cannot use shadows using this approach. So uh, it's just not going to work. It's going to look terrible. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have a fix for this. So if you do this, make sure not to use shadows, I guess. It is kind of a, a, a downside and it does make it really annoying. You can even go with realistic with this, but you cannot just use shadows. That's the that's the downside of this whole approach. But there we go. It does make an interesting open 3D view, which can be quite useful. Now let's take a look at the second approach. So as you can see, I have kind of reset everything and this is actually a completely new file. And uh, now we're going to be attempting the uh, the, set, the second approach. Uh, now for this second approach, we will uh, have to kind of open up our model manually, uh, meaning changing the geometry, uh, changing the roof uh, uh, footprint, changing the wall uh, uh, profile and so on. Uh, now, a way that you can kind of keep the original model is uh, when you do this, you want to use design options. Now, that's just one way. The second way would be just to take your model and then basically just copy the file and then open up a separate file in a separate location where you just have it for the purposes of that open 3D view. So that's one of the options. Uh, now, the second option, which uh, kind of is all inside of one Revit project is to use design options. So what you would do for that is simply go here to the manage tab uh, and there here we have the design options uh, panel and then we have the design options. Uh, now here you would just create a new option set. Uh, you can rename it uh, into, uh, let's call it the open 3D view set. Okay, and then the primary option one uh, will be renamed into no open view. There we go. And then we will add a secondary option, which we will name the open 3D view. Okay, so once we have these two created, uh, you want to close out of this menu. And now you will see that here uh, below we have uh, the option to choose between those two uh, design options. So what you want to do next is select the items affected. And, and in this case, that's going to be the curtain wall, the roof, as well as this uh, wall over here. Okay, so with that selected, uh, you can go and you have this little button that says add to set, and then you can add it to both sets, which is exactly what you want to do and then click OK. OK, so once you have done that, you want to change this from a from the main model to open 3D view. Now, as you can see, most of the model will be grayed out and you will only be able to affect the uh, the items that you have selected. And something to note here is that this uh, approach will give you much more versatility than the previous one. So for example, if I select this roof and go into edit footprint, I don't have to just carve out a kind of a perpendicular part. I can go and start from the middle here like that and then I can go off at an a at a 45 degree angle which is uh, I think kind of cool. Uh, now we might want to bring this towards the inside a little bit. There we go and let's, let's just unlock this view so I can orbit around. There we go. Okay, so with this done, uh, let's select these two uh, sides, uh, uncheck the fine slope to, un uh, to, to make them, well, not the fine slope. And then you just want to use the trim and extend to corner to fix it up just like this. So only this line will define slope. Now uh, this will give you a roof that looks kind of like this and we can delete these elements, there we go. And as you can see, this is what that roof looks now. And we have kind of an opening that's, uh, as I said, a little bit more versatility than the previous method. Uh, next for this wall, we can just go into edit profile. Uh, let's uh, close out this, there we go. And then you can simply come from this edge here. Now you can use pick lines if you want to be really careful about it. And then you can go here from the middle or something, just like that. Use trim and extend, there we go. Just fix this up, perhaps go a little bit more down. 
and then you can hit finish and this is what that would look like. Now the downside is you can't really edit windows. Uh, I mean you would have to edit the family to have it kind of cut open and that's definitely not worth the trouble. So you can just leave it like this or you can hide those families. Uh, those are kind of the two options that you have. You can select all of these windows that are affected and then just hide those or you can have them appear uh, just like that kind of poking out a little bit. Uh, next for this wall again I would use edit profile and then for that let's delete the elements. I would simply use the align tool to align it. Let's see. Align it with this line like that. Remove constraints. Then I would add a vertical line like this and then uh, an angled one like that. And then I would use the trim and extend to fix it all up. There we go. And then just hit finish and unjoin elements and delete these elements. Uh, now one downside of this approach is that Revit will put in mullions here alongside this edge. So that's usually something that you don't want to show in this type of a view. So you can just hover over that, use the tab key, uh, and I'm just using the control key to add to selection. So I would just select all of these uh, boundary mullions and then I would go to hide and view and just hide those elements like that. So the view would look better. There we go. And then the well, the, the benefit is that you can add shadows. You can even add some, uh, well, let's see. You can show ambient shadows. I think this looks cool. So as you can see, it does give you a bit more uh, versatility and the model can look a lot better. But the downside is that you do have to go through the trouble of kind of fixing everything up. Now, the upside is this isn't a permanent change. At any point, you can go back to your main model and you can continue working. And as long as the main model is selected here in the design options, your model will look exactly how it does. And then when you want your open 3D view, you can just set that to that open 3D view and you have your, well, open 3D view. So there you go. Those are some of the approaches that we have for creating something like this. It really depends on what you're trying to achieve, what are some of your goals and well, how much time you have and what is the kind of the end, uh, end goal with it. So there you go. I, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, video. If you would like to check out some of my courses, uh, you can find them in the first link in the description. It takes you to my website, balkanarctic.com. There I have over 100 hours of uh, Revit course content. Uh, also there you can find my templates and for all of my project files like this file here, uh, you can find that on my Patreon page which will be the second link in the description. So check that out as well. Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you have learned something new. Make sure to subscribe, like and share this video and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.